the usefulness of having an intelligent second screen becomes really clear when you start mixing, especially when you see the long throw faders. Now, the communication between Logic and Logic Remote is instantaneous. When I select a track in Logic, that track is also selected in Logic Remote. You can select directly from Logic Remote by double tapping on the track name. And if your mix is big, I mean with a lot of channel strips, well, you can use this slider right here and get to anywhere you want in your mixer. You can also increment through the tracks by tapping the left and right arrows on either side of the display. Now tracks don't have to be selected for their controls to be active. You can just grab any control you want and touch it, raise the faders, turn the knobs, solo and mute. That's the power of multi-touch. You can set a fader or knob to its neutral normal position by just double tapping on it. Or in the case of the fader, you can tap anywhere in the fader area. Okay, so now let's bring up some bass. Notice that track one is selected, but I can still grab the bass's fader. Here's some clav. I'll pan it to the right by dragging to the right. Remember, there's no difference between this and Logic's mixer. What you do here is what's happening in Logic's mixer. Now, if you want longer throw faders, just tap on that volume button. Soloing is accomplished by just tapping on the letter S. What if I want to adjust the sends? Well, you tap right here where it says sends one through four and just drag up and down on any of the knobs. Let me solo the synth part too. To reset the solos, or to turn them all off at the same time, touch the reset button over there near the master fader on the right. Like on a real recording console, if you touch one button and slide across, it will activate similar buttons across the channel strips, or deactivate them. I'm going to go back to the pan and volume view. So that's how Logic Remote's mixer works. There's still a few more things I'd like to show you.